In this video, we explore Service Manager configuration. We show how to configure Service Manager in one of the most conventional environments, an atomic automation server on a Unix system and agents on other systems. This is by far the most prevalent setup and Service Manager configuration can be tricky. This is because Service Manager Dialog, the current SM interface, is only supported on Windows platforms. First, we'll configure Service Manager on Windows. We'll consider the configuration and definition files. We'll set Service Manager to Auto Start. Then, on Windows, we'll consider what needs to be done with Service Manager Dialog to support the entire instance. There's a couple of important steps. Finally, we'll start the Service Manager, consider the behaviors in AWI, the configuring of services in the dialog and the impacts on the SMC file. We start with a fully configured AA server on the Unix host. It includes server processes and a functioning service manager that manages and auto starts those services. A Unix platform means there is no service manager dialog. You cannot access service manager interactively using only local resources. We also have deployed CAPKI on every system we're using. This is important. CAPKI should be deployed prior to installing agents and service managers. You can do so afterwards, but you need to restart those components for CAPKI to take effect. Then we have a Unix host with a Unix agent. It was installed and it works, but it stopped. The service manager was also installed, configured, and started on the system. Finally, we have the Windows hosts. We're going to control our instance from this machine. We have a functional Windows agent, and the service manager and SM dialog have been installed but not configured. This presentation is going to focus on the Windows host. We'll show how to configure Service Manager and the dialog. The procedure is as follows. First, we configure the definitions file. We have a Windows agent and an installed Service Manager. We'll update the SMD file so that we can generate the agent service. Then we'll install the Service Manager Windows service. This gives us the ability to stop and start interactively and auto start at boot. Then we'll start the Service Manager using the Windows service. We'll show how to control all Service Managers through the dialog and the behaviors in AWI. Finally, we'll configure Agent Services and Service Manager and see the impacts on the uc4.smc file. This is our Windows host. The agent has been installed and configured. Service Manager and Dialog have also been installed, but they were left as is. Let's head to the bin directory of the service manager and configure the uc4.smd file, which defines AA services when service manager is started. In our case, we have only one agent, so we'll have a single definition. The service manager is a local resource by design. It can only define services for components on the local host. As such, the associated SMD file on this Windows computer does not require lines for server processes and other agents. We can comment out these lines or remove them. They're part of the installation package and they're not needed. The name of the agent service handled by Service Manager has to match the name of the agent defined in the agent's configuration INI file. We have to make sure that the file paths match the file paths of the agent and the agent's INI file. Star own points to the current directory as the starting points. The double dots allow you to move up a directory in the file system. Service Manager is now configured so that when it starts, the Windows agent service is created and points to its executable file path. We have not yet started the Service Manager, so nothing's changed on this machine. For Service Manager to auto start at boots, we install a Windows service and set it to automatic. We do this on the command line interface. For this, we use the UCBSMGR executable with the dash install option. The Windows service has been installed, we can start it. Setting the service to automatic guarantees that at boot the service manager starts and creates services for the components listed in the SMD file. The service is there and it's set to automatic. 
Let's start it. The service manager is started and is working normally. Use logs in the temp directory of the manager to troubleshoot issues. We can start service manager dialog. When installing a standalone service manager dialog, you may run into this issue. Windows is missing some DLLs. To fix this, install the Microsoft Visual C++ packages that are found in the Atomic Automation Installation Package in the External Resources directory. You'll find three sets of libraries and directories identified by the letter CRTS. Make sure they're installed. Right now, the dialog won't do much other than provide access to local services. But by starting the dialog, we add some basic configuration in the dialog's INI file. We can add more information to network the dialog. Without it, we cannot browse service managers on other systems. In the Hostname List section, we add the hosts where service managers exist. Make sure you add host names and not agent names. We can even use IP addresses if we want. In situations where service managers across the atomic landscape are using non-default ports, you can set hosts or IP addresses with ports in the Dialog's INI file. Dialog will be able to connect to the local service manager if you have one. Without the local service manager, Dialog won't be able to control local services. But in either case, Dialog would be able to connect to service managers on remote systems, even though those managers are not using the default 8871 port. Our Dialog is properly networked, we start it. Everything is properly configured. From this Windows machine, you can control your services interactively across the entire AA landscape. Changes you make here will be reflected in the AWI agent list. Also, agent links are created dynamically. Service Manager connects to the service communication process, which reports the status of the agents in AWI. You will also be notified in the Messages window. The last piece is the configuration of the SMC file, which auto-starts the services. Essentially, when the Service Manager starts at boot, it sources information from the SMC file and starts services automatically. It's best not to handle the SMC file manually and set the information in SM dialog instead. Right now, the SMC file does not exist. We access a services properties and set to auto start. When we restart Service Manager, the SMC file will be generated dynamically. We set the agent to start automatically. We can also insert a pause in seconds.